BV, yeast infections, or UTIs, you want to know why they keep coming back. I had two lovely ladies ask me to talk to them about biofilm, and so this is for you. There's one thing that all these annoying infections have in common, and that's something called a biofilm. I warn you, this is a bit of a data dump today, but please stick with me on this one because I think it's very valuable info. Formation of biofilm is a survival mechanism for fungus and bacteria. Under the protection of their biofilm, microbes can become resistant to antibiotics and the immune response, which makes them very difficult to treat and a real challenge for doctors to deal with. Many studies have indicated very clearly that antibiotic treatment on its own, in most cases, doesn't get rid of biofilm infections. That's why many people take a round of treatment, symptoms go away, and then shortly after it comes back. Effectively treating biofilm requires a multi-step approach, and I want to talk about a few of the ways you can do this for your vaginal infections. Biofilms are often the reason behind chronic strep throat, sinus infections, irritable bowel issues, and you guessed it, vaginal infections. It's incredibly frustrating to deal with also because there just hasn't been a ton of good research in women who suffer recurrent vaginal infections. Why does biofilm develop? Biofilm happens when bacteria adheres strongly to the vaginal epithelium. Antibiotic resistance can also happen with the inappropriate use of antibiotics, not using antibiotics for the full recommended duration, and having multiple recurrences of infection. Bacteria growing in a biofilm can be up to a thousand times more resistant to antibiotics than bacteria just floating around in your body. So this is a pretty big deal, especially for those of us who struggle with infections that just keep coming back over and over again. BV, as we know, is the most common vaginal infection in women. And even after an initial response to treatment, almost 50% of women will get BV again. And we know now this is because it's associated with a biofilm. But here's the issue if you're still taking oral antibiotics, right? Over time, antibiotics do a number on your gut health, your microflora, your yeast bacteria balance, and can cause real issues down the road. I have always thought going directly to the source was better, and so if given the choice between oral antibiotics or vaginal, I like vaginal treatments way better. I can protect my gut health with oral supplements if I feel it's right, and then I can treat what's going on vaginally. I was on an oral antifungal for chronic yeast infections for years, and they were really hard on my liver and my gut. Even though I was super careful about following the protocol of doctors, not drinking alcohol, not eating a ton of sugar or carbohydrates, I got my blood work checked regularly when I was on medication, but I could still see what was happening in the long term with some of these things. I really feel for people who have to be on medication long term because you have to take care of yourself the best that you can, and sometimes it's unavoidable. We have to take the prescriptions. But if there are other ways of treating the vagina locally, I like that first. And by that, I mean vaginal suppositories and vaginal antibiotics while supporting my immune system with other supplements. And there's some really good herbal supplements, especially traditional Chinese medicine and herbs that can help with biofilm. And that's what we're gonna get into. So we'll start with BV. Remember when I said that the data tells us that combination therapy is more effective than single antibiotics? A combination of antibiotics can work, or many gynecologists actually recommend treating with an antibiotic in addition to boric acid suppositories. Now, I know you know I like boric acid, especially for recurrent issues, and this is one area that the research tells us boric acid can really help. Boric acid in combination with a drug called metronidazole or another antibiotic has been shown to be way more effective at reducing BV and keeping it away. And then there's some data that says you could then follow with vaginal probiotics to try and get your good lactobacillus counts up. The goal is to first reduce the burden on the body with antibiotics, then to get rid of the biofilm with boric acid, and then hopefully recolonize good lactic acid producing bacteria with a vaginal probiotic. It's interesting that clinical studies have shown that some antibiotics like azithromycin in combination with ginseng and garlic significantly improve the immune system's ability to clear biofilms. There's actually a lot of literature for other areas of the body developing biofilms and unfortunately just not a lot for the vagina. I've also told you I like herbs and supplements that have clinical data. And so things I like are garlic, I like ginseng, I like curcumin, 
and I like some citrus seed extracts and something called lactoferrin. Side note, I've also struggled with sinus infections throughout adulthood, and I did notice an improvement after I started taking a high-dose ginseng with echinacea. Lactoferrin also has data associated with it, and that's an interesting supplement because lactoferrin is, is basically a protein found in milk and it's already part of the innate immune system. I can link some lactoferrin supplements for you below. It's expensive, but it's really good stuff. The other big supplement I wanna talk about, regardless of what kind of infection you have, is something called NAC. NAC or NAC stands for N-acetylcysteine. Now this has been recommended to me by a few practitioners and so I've been taking NAC quite a bit over the last two years. At first I took it because I was taking an antifungal every day for a long time and so I wanted to help my body out a little bit with processing that. It's an antioxidant that has a lot of really cool properties. It's a natural product, I guess. It's an amino acid, but it works so well. It's been used in hospitals and by physicians for patients who have to take certain medications and undergo certain treatments. It's used when patients undergo some chemotherapy. NAC is a precursor to glutathione, and glutathione really supports the liver and the kidneys, and it does a whole bunch of great things for the body. It also has antibacterial properties, but Really, it helps to detach biofilms, and I think it's definitely a product to keep at the top of the list because it has really good data, especially for infection. Moving on, like BV biofilm, Candida biofilm can also reduce the effectiveness of antifungals. Yeast can be aggressive, but it's a different type of infection, and it doesn't really recur the same way as BV unless there's an underlying issue. Effective biofilm inhibitors for yeast also include boric acid, my gynecologist over the years always recommended boric acid for yeast infections when oral antifungals didn't really work. You can always get heavy duty vaginal antifungals like terconazole or ketoconazole, but you have to work with your gynecologist on those ones. There is an old school treatment that I did with my gynecologist, but I do know some women have done this at home and that's use something called gentian violet. Essentially, I went into my gyno's office and she would paint the insides of my vagina with a bright purple solution called gentian violet. And this stuff works for yeast. Oh my God, does it work. But it is so messy and it will dye literally everything it touches purple. Some women actually will soak tampons in a 1% solution of boric acid and then insert that for a few hours to treat their yeast infections. It works, but seriously, I dyed my floor purple permanently, my bathtub, my underwear, my clothes, my hands. It's really intense stuff. I also do a lot of traditional Chinese medicine and I work with an acupuncturist who's a master herbalist and I do and have done many Asian herbs that work beautifully for yeast and candida. Acupuncture is great for the immune system, we know that. Clearing damp heat, improving yin energy, hot flashes, vaginal dryness. I love, love acupuncture for many reasons and I've been doing it for years. I've found it incredible for sleep, anxiety, energy, and I've noticed improvements in my sex drive, libido, um, my itchy skin, vaginal dryness, redness. Everything is just way more juicy and healthy when I get acupuncture. I work with my acupuncturist quite closely and I choose to do my herbal remedies as tea. I find it better for my system to have him make up custom formulas using the herbs and Personally, I do that uh, three times a day. The last area that I'm gonna talk about is really important um, when we discuss biofilm formation, and that's chronic UTIs, recurrent cystitis. Really, really frustrating for many women. The first product on my list is D-Manos. D-Manos is a simple sugar, basically, and it prevents bacteria from adhering to the urothelium of the urinary tract. It binds to E. coli, and there's decent randomized clinical trials that show it helps to treat and prevent UTIs. You can find D-mannose alone or in combination with cranberry extract. Um, just make sure that you're finding the right strength and dose of each. I'm gonna link some resources below for you. Along with D-mannose, there's an interesting ingredient I've been reading a lot more on lately that I wanna talk to you about, and that's something called noni fruit extract. So like cranberry extract, it's gotten some attention over the years because it's a proven antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory, and it can be used to help with UTIs, just like cranberry. Some of you might find this interesting, but they looked at a trial in women undergoing chemotherapy for breast cancer who had chronic cystitis due to hormone depletion. And in that trial, they used a combination of NAC, NAC, with D-mannose and noni fruit extract during their chemo. 
and they found a significant reduction of infections compared to antibiotics. I really like that combo because NAC has the ability to disrupt the pathogen biofilm and noni fruit extract is a natural strong anti-inflammatory. So this combo is really immunostimulating, antimicrobial, and just really good for the immune system all around. What I'm saying to wrap up is that there are many things you can explore if you're struggling with infections. It's, it's not one size fits all. It's not natural versus pharmaceutical when it comes to getting rid of chronic infections. I wish you could watch this video and I could tell you there's a magical natural treatment that will make it all go away. There's a lot of trial and error, unfortunately, and I think in really stubborn cases, you need to look at both approaches together. The combination of alternative therapies can enhance antibiotic treatment and combination therapies can work better um, for bacterial biofilm infections. It's really promising and I hope that more work gets done in this area because it's so essential for us. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys next week.